lovelies, it's Sundar from Substance Over Star and welcome to a new video. So, um, I'm very in my yin today as you can see in my little vintage tea dress and thrifted pink cardigan. Um, because today I want to talk to you about how you can attract a better type of man by healing your inner feminine. So this is a video for the girls or for those who express express themselves um, as more feminine energy beings. So, so let me just turn the volume down. Apologies for that, slight technical issue there. Um, I'm just lighting some sandalwood because if you caught my video on healing the sacral chakra, which is your womb space, um, if you're a woman, um, even if you're not a woman, you have, you'll have an energetic womb space. Sandalwood is has been used for you know centuries by all kinds of um, different traditions, especially in South Asia, to kind of access higher realms of consciousness. And I'm kind of feeling like I got to access some some higher sort of level thinking to do this video because I've been gestating it for quite a few weeks now and I know that when I experience that kind of resistance to making a video it's usually because it's going into a lot more deeper topics um, so I need to really really fully understand it before I um, deliver it to you. Um, so sandalwood is very connected to the sacred feminine uh, and the sacral chakra and so I thought it would be a good one to burn to help me deliver the knowledge that I'm about to drop. So um, whether I don't know if you know already, but I'm assuming that you do. But if you don't, I'm just gonna tell you now that um, so we all have masculine and feminine energy, regardless of your biological sex. Um, now, throughout life, a lot of the time, we as a result of traumas and social conditioning um, and societal conditioning in large part, um, sometimes those energies can become out of balance and currently we've been in a paradigm that has been very patriarchal in nature and very left brain dominant um it's a very solar type culture so it's very nine to five very masculine um very left brain now i'm going to include um, a diagram here that explains um sort of left brain thinking versus right brain thinking now this is a kind of it's a bit of a simplification because there are deeper levels to it, um, but just for the for the purpose of illustration and for understanding these concepts, um, I want to show you this this image, which kind of shows you that left brain thinking, which tends to be more masculine energy type thinking, is very logical. It's scientific. Um, it's rational, um, mathematical, um, action oriented. Um, right brain thinking is more intuitive, it's more emotional, it's more creative, it's more passive and submissive rather than dominant, which is more left brain thinking. Now, both of these energies need to be balanced in a healthy in individual. Um, and this is what the ancients have talked about for a long time. If you look at the Vedas and if you look at, you know, the, even the Abrahamic religions will talk about this, although some of this stuff has been occulted from those teachings, um, that balancing the, the, the masculine and the feminine energies within the self um, is what results in the Kundalini awakening. So in the, in the Christian tradition, this is known as the Christos, the spinal fluid. Um, that's why your sexual organs are connected to your pineal gland because when you balance the the masculine and feminine energy that's that's your sexual creative energy it kind of um, results in a kundalini awakening and I will talk about these concepts throughout many of my videos um, so it's important for you to get an understanding of this if you're going to be watching more of my channel um, so what happens is when um, when these energies become out of balance, uh, and in many people they are, and, and because we are fractals of the whole society is very imbalanced and has been very imbalanced towards a left brain paradigm for such a long time, 
um, as women, we also become imbalanced in this way. Um, now, the problem with, I talked before about in my video, integrating the shadow, which you should definitely watch because I'm gonna refer to that video um, at several points during this video. Um, the, the, the place in which feminism has failed us is in not understanding um, the nuanced nature of femininity. So third wave feminists are currently teaching that femininity is a false construct which is designed to oppress. Now, the reason why they say this is because out of balance femininity, which becomes right brain dominant, and I'm gonna include another pictogram here, um, results in codependency, it, it results in slave think, naivety, blind belief, um, code, yeah, codependency. And um, this is what I will refer to as the toxic feminine. Now we've talked about toxic masculinity before and we're all very well familiar with what toxic masculinity is, um, which is kind of being a dominator, being aggressive, being very controlling, um, but over competitive, rigidly skeptical, over scientific. Um, toxic femininity is not so easily understood because a lot of, you know, a lot of the sort of YouTube community and the red pill community and all these people, they don't really, because they do not study the occult, they have a very rudimentary understanding of these things. So they talk about toxic femininity as anything toxic that a woman does, not understanding the deeper places where it's coming from. So it's only toxic femininity if it's the toxic feminine. And I talked about this in my video, The Incel Revolution and the Socially Conditioned Alpha, which I also think, if you haven't seen that video, pause this video, watch that, and then come back to this. Because again, I'm gonna go deeper into some of the the topics that I touched on in that one. Um, the toxic feminine is too submissive. She doesn't know her own power. She doesn't know her the strength of her femininity. She doesn't understand that her femininity in itself is powerful not because it's like the masculine, but because of the nature of femininity itself, because of being in touch with our emotions, because of being, you know, having the ability to create life or just to create anything. You know, a feminine who's truly in her feminine power has an incredible ability to activate a man into his masculine potential. So understanding the the nature of femininity um, and the way that it's been suppressed, the way that it's been controlled, the way that it's been used to commodify things, the way it's been used to manipulate um, and how these are all distortions of the true sacred feminine. Um, and there are multiple different expressions of the sacred feminine, which is why I kind of say, I always tell people that they should, that working with goddess archetypes can be really beneficial because the goddesses, um, and there's many of them depicted through all different kinds of uh, traditions and religions, um, are all different embodiments of the sacred feminine. So you've got Kali, the destroyer, you've got Ishtar, who's a goddess of sexuality, but also truth and justice and fertility. Then you've got Venus, Aphrodite, who are more sort of um, about beauty and about love and very soft and, and, and stuff like that. And then you've got, you know, Athena, who is, you know, goddess of knowledge. So all these different archetypes and you know you can pick whichever ones relate to you the most and also which ones are from the tradition that maybe you're more comfortable with that your ancestry relates to more um, these can all be helpful in helping you to um, heal those wounds around your femininity because we all do have wounds around our femininity um, and it can result in us becoming very for me my issue was that I became codependent and in order to try and heal that if you understand hermeticism then you understand the the principle of rhythm that the pendulum will swing from one pole 
uh, again t uh, referencing the principle of duality so if everything is dual in nature um, then codependency and narcissism are two sides of the same coin masculinity and femininity are also two sides of the same coin and they both have elements of each other so if you look at the yin and the yang with the black side which is the feminine and the white side which is the masculine I believe I'll have to double check but they both have elements of each other so masculinity contains elements of femininity in it, and femininity contains elements of masculinity in them as well and at the extremes they meet so they become very similar in nature when they meet so it's the same with codependency and narcissism they both come from a place of disempowerment a lack of self-love and needing to get your needs filled by another person instead of being the, uh, the source of your own um, love that then overflows so you meet your own needs first and then you're able to meet another as deeply as you've met yourself um, so with femininity we have to understand what it means to be truly balanced in our femininity and to be truly balanced in our femininity means that we must also be balanced in our masculinity so as you heal your wounds around your femininity you also heal your wounds around the masculine because you'll find that if you have wounds with your femininity then you can tend to become either very extremely codependent or left brain imbalanced so for me i i was always quite left brain dominant i was very comfortable in my masculine energy um you know i was a badass and you know very gave a very tough exterior but when i would get into a relationship um once you break down those walls, which isn't always easy to do if you've got them up uh, as a result of wounding, underneath you're so fragile because you haven't empowered your own femininity. So then that's where the codependency lies underneath. So you have to balance those two so that as a woman you are strong in your masculine core, um, but your femininity on the outside is warm and receptive. And I referred to this in the video Integrating the Shadow or the Demonic Self, and where I talked about the LeVay personality clock, um, where he talks about your apparent self and then your demonic alter ego and then your core self and everybody's different with their expression some women are naturally more have a more masculine exterior um what tends to happen is if you're extremely feminine in nature you will tend to attract and be attracted to a man who's extremely masculine in nature um because you're integrating your demonic self and i talked about this in depth about the metaphysics of attraction in my video soulmates soul streams um, i'll put a link to that um, so pause this video and watch that and then come back to this so that you can kind of really fully integrate what i'm saying um, you'll be attracted to somebody who's trying to who's going to help you integrate those unhealed parts of yourself so if you have wounds around masculinity as a result of having wounds around femininity then the masculines that will show up in your life will also be wounded they may be left brain or they may be right brain imbalance now i'm going to include another little chart here this is from mark passio's work this was his seminar that he did on feminism which comes with a strong content warning if you're easily triggered don't watch it if you're a feminist you might be very very offended by the things that he's saying but it does contain a lot of truth some of the stuff i think i don't didn't necessarily agree with and i think sometimes some of the areas are not well researched but there there is a lot of truth and a lot of um nuggets of wisdom to kind of take from it um and i watched it quite a while ago and uh, as things have progressed um, I've started to understand it more and more, especially after dealing with feminists online, because the problem that I have with feminist thinking is, is it becomes very cult-like um, and it becomes very Marxist, um, sort of cultural Marxist. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, this is our narrative now. They, and I understand why, because they're basically implementing the principle of rhythm so they understand that we've gone this far towards the left brain so they're swinging the pendulum this far in the other direction because eventually it will come back into the middle but now i've seen how far they've gone and i know that that's not the truth because the truth always lies somewhere in the middle so i'm swinging it back this way and saying no 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 sis you've gone way too far femininity is not a false construct it's not the root of your oppression it's the root of your empowerment if you learn how to use it so um 
I'm going to include this diagram. Um, let me just pull it up so that I can see it. So what tends to happen is if you are a left brain dominant female, you'll be this kind of alpha type female. And I referred to that in my incel video. And this is what people in the red pill community tend to refer to as the Stacey. Um, so you're kind of very sort of, you're alpha according to feminine socially conditioned principles, which is just literally about surface stuff. So just your looks. Um, maybe you have also like a good job and a good career as well, but it's basically the, the, the things that society perceives as being, you know, high marketplace value for a woman. Um, so you will be conditioned to desire the dominant type alpha, which is a left brain imbalanced male, because your wounded feminine has a magnetic attraction towards him. And this, this is just science. Like this is, you know, how our particles work, um, which aren't really particles, but I talked about that in the soulmates video. So do watch that. Um, if you're the, um, the thing is, if you do end up in a relationship with an alpha type male, because both of you are left brain dominant, you have an overabundance of yang energy, which is quite, um, it basically becomes too competitive with his masculine energy. So you end up bucking heads quite a lot. And so the relationship isn't really going to ultimately work. And the, the, the thing is, this, this also happens in relationships. You know, there needs to be a gender polarity in all relationships. It doesn't matter whether they're homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, polyamorous. There needs to be that masculine, feminine polarity because that's what creates attraction. Um, and this is why narcissists and codependents are so magnetically drawn to each other because they have that polarity that and 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 it's in, in the meeting of it that they balance each other out so narcissists in that way are actually very very important healers and you should you should take it as a gift because if you're attracting narcissists there's something in you that needs to be healed and it's your responsibility and you have the power to heal it within yourself when you're ready to stop blaming them for the source of your problems and start taking responsibility for your own wounding um so Ultimately, the, the most uh, functional um, kind of relationship that you can have as an alpha type female is one with a beta male. So that's a that's a, a, a masculine who is who has an overabundance of yin energy. So, well, it's not he's not even masculine. It will be a man who's not particularly masculine, who has more feminine energy because he will help to balance you out. But the problem with that is it's very difficult for, I mean, for me personally, anyway, it's very difficult for me to respect a man like that. And it's very difficult for me to become aroused by a man like that. Unless sometimes it, things can switch. So in, if you, in your, so, some, sometimes these relationships can be functional where, you know, the, the woman is very, um, sort of, dominant in terms of like the household and relationship things like that but then when it comes to bedroom she knows how to submit to his, to his more dominant sexual nature so if you're able to have a relationship in which you have quite clear roles in that way it can be quite functional um but if you're finding that you keep attracting these kind of very submissive type guys and you're tired of it then looking at your wounds around your femininity might be a good place to start your healing journey um otherwise and and it's it's clear why why women tend to kind of go into this because and this is what third wave feminism has done it's turned us into alpha females you know we're getting to the top shattering glass ceilings and we're competing according to masculine principles not feminine principles because the divine feminine is still being suppressed and it's being suppressed by us it's being suppressed by feminism because they don't think that being a mother, a caregiver, um, you know, all those feminine qualities, they don't think that being beautiful, they don't think that being sensual um, are worthy aspirations. These are all feminine qualities. And they're, you know, we're here to bring beauty to this world that we're, we're, the, create, we're the creators. We are expressions of the goddess. That's our role. Um, and many women are uncomfortable with this because they want to compete on a living play, playing field with men. They want to be 
the same as men and so that is so misguided sis like i'm telling you it's you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to find happiness in your intimate intimate partner relationships if you've got that kind of thinking if you think that there's something wrong with your femininity like honestly um you know whether you choose to believe me or not is up to you but i have found that doing this work has resulted in um the examples of masculinity that are now showing up in my external because i've as i've healed the, the feminine i've also balanced it with the masculine they're so much more um authentic they're so much more balanced um they've, they're so much more healed um so yeah when you the, the the goal is to to get to this point of um where you become the authentic woman or the authentic man the the spiritual alpha which is balanced when you ba balance your yin and your yang and that's when you actually start to become self-realized that's when your pineal gland starts to open you start to become awake it truly is a spiritual journey um but the way that you're able to experience better relationships externally is by cultivating your relationship with yourself first. So you, you don't expect other people, you don't expect men or, you know, masculine women or wh whoever, whoever it is that you're attracted to, you don't expect them to come into your life and do things for you that you're not doing for yourself you improve your relationship with yourself first you meet your own needs and when you meet your own needs you set the standard for how other people will treat you and you don't settle for less than that you figure out what you're looking for you figure out the kind of life that you want and you use your feminine energy to cultivate that to create it to manifest it because we work in quite different ways to the masculine and when we try and work in ways um in, in masculine ways, we become depleted. We, we, we're not built to work like men. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but we are supposed to be creators. We are supposed to be mothers. We are supposed to be caregivers. That's why it's easier for us to do those things. You know, like it's not easy for you to kind of chop down trees and build homes and do things that are much easier for men to do because your body isn't built like that. You, your hormonal system isn't built like that. You know, you have a monthly cycle every month that begs you to take a couple of days rest so that you can get in touch with yourself, with your feminine intuition. You know, if you if you keep on trying to run on this treadmill of, you know, doing achieving according to how society wants you to be, then you'll continue to be disappointed in the masculine. Because I know we have this idea that, you know, the masculine is just so thirsty, um, that they're just obsessed with sex, and that they're just, you know, materialistic and too competitive, and all of this, these limiting beliefs that we have about the masculine. But we don't realise that a lot of what they do is for our validation and for our approval. I was having this conversation with my friend um, Daniel, who is a philosopher, Daniel Pinchbeck, you may have heard of him, he's a, a philosopher and a, an author. I'll actually put a, a link to a couple of his books in the description box below because you, he's done some really nice books on um, plant spirit medicines, breaking open the head, that was a really good one, and he's done a couple of really important works recently. Um, but I was having a conversation with him about this topic. Um, and he said that he kind of realized it and wrote about it in his book 2012 where he looked at the etymological origins of the word material materialistic it comes from matter martyr mother because we're sensual beings why is this sorry that's a pop-up we're sensual beings we like beauty we like tactile things we like pretty things you know, that's why we wear all this stuff, you know, because we enjoy it. And feminists want to have you believing that there's something wrong with you wanting to look pretty. There's something wrong with you cultivating your beauty. There's something wrong with your sensuality. They'll have you believing that if you look at other women, you know, beautiful women who are embodying their sexuality and their sensuality, you know, like these Instagram models, they, 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 they want to shame you for that and they want to shame you for wanting to be like that when actually there's something so primal about that this has just goddess worship 
this is goddess worship obviously it's become disconnected from its true multi-dimensional nature but that's what it is you know that's the creator goddess and that's why we worship her and that's exactly why the masculine is so ma magnetically drawn to us because they came from the void and to the void they want to return and it's not just about sex like yeah they do want to be inside us but they want to be inside our emotional waters and it's up to us to set the standard that's why i talked about in my video um sacred sexuality um and uh hookup culture and blah 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 about how women's physiology actually lends us to being the sexual gatekeepers because we set the standard so a lot of feminists like to complain about how men behave and how men have created all these systems and they control the world and blah, blah, blah. Men wouldn't do any of this if we didn't put up with it. If we didn't validate men who behave in these certain types of ways, this whole situation that we have on the planet right now would not be in existence. This is the matriarchy behind the patriarchy. This is the hidden hand. You've always had the power, sis. And it's by what you allow into your womb space that dictates that. So. You, the, healing healing the feminine is not just about you experiencing better relationships just in your in your own world it's about because as above so below as within so without so what's happening with within you is microcosmic of what's happening within the world so this is really great work that we need to do by healing ourselves we can actually heal society because we choose better men we choose better fathers we choose better sons we, d we basically decide what goes forward because we are the creators. So, understand that. Um, I think that's it. Like, I could go, I could talk about this a lot more and I made some very extensive notes, but I don't want to make this video too long. Um, and I want to talk about it more and kind of have a more of a conversation with you guys about it. So please leave me your comments. Um, feel free to ask me any questions because I want to do like another follow up um, and kind of keep this conversation going. Because I do think that we need a bit of a counter narrative because right now we're becoming very polarized and there doesn't seem to be a real genuine safe space for us as women between the whole you know misogynistic on the right and the feminists on the left like there is always a middle way and that's where the truth lies okay thanks so much for watching guys i love you all and i'll see you in the next video you introduced Bye. lsd and unless you you've taken some other well but like for instance like um marijuana or something um well you know it's an altogether new thing and um you actually can ex have an, a religious experience